Well, for more now on the situation in uh, Sudan, I'm joined on Skype by Alam Ahmed, who is the founder of the International Diaspora Project slash Sudan Knowledge. Uh, thank you uh, very much for joining us, sir. Perhaps you could uh, tell us perhaps first, uh, what have you been able to find out from ordinary people living through this in Sudan that you might be in touch with? We're hearing that they, they can't get out to buy basic provisions amid all this fighting. Thank you very much uh, for having me on your program and thank you for the coverage, uh, which is very uh, appreciated because other people have been able to know anything about Sudan. I think that what we have been following from day and night from people in Sudan, groups, WhatsApp, and also following the news from the channels, uh, the situation is very, very, very distressful uh, in Sudan, very ugly and his desire, because people now are dying. And uh, yesterday we heard about the news of even a body. They could, they have to bury him in, in one of the universities in Khartoum, for example. We don't know whether this is a correct or not, but uh, one of the people is speaking on the uh, one of the videos. She said they had to bury a body in, a, in the University of Khartoum. Uh, the, the Sudanese uh, doctor union have been uh, asking for the last two days that they should be able to be given any security or any safe passages so they can pick even the dead bodies. The situation is very ugly. And to compare this with the situation when we have uh, the, the, this, uh, in 2019, people, they were marching on the street again in the previous regime, but at least they were able to get out of their houses. Now they are not. Because shooting, and you have just mentioned in your program earlier, uh, there have been even diplomatics uh, being attacked. Uh, World well Food Program, they have three being killed. And this has been ongoing. The European Union, they have their ambassador being also attacked. So it's, there is no control of the fire. People are killed in their houses. There is no water. Many people we've spoken to, they have their water being cut. And more interestingly, several, uh, three, four people from different parts of Khartoum, they told us, uh, the electric supply of their district is being hit, whether it's been intended to black them out or what is the situation. So people are simply hostage either in their houses or hostage in other people's houses for two, three days. They can't even reunion with their family. Health situation is very bad. Uh, Family-wise, uh, the mental disorder for people now is really, really severe. Is the fighting uh, mostly in Khartoum? I, it seems to be in very many areas. Can you give us an idea if this develops into a civil war, which is what many fear, how might uh, the country divide up? The main focus of the fighting is in Khartoum. But outside of Khartoum, it starts to spread out. But the one spot point out of Khartoum, which has also been a, a, a focus, is Marawi. Because Marawi, if you remember, the whole story broke from Marawi Airport, where the Egyptian, the, the, when the rabbit force, support force, captured some Egyptian uh, military in, in doing training, the Egyptian claimed they're doing training with the Sudanese army. This uh, airport out of Khartoum is the one which is still being the focus, because the rabbit force, the support force, they take it, and they announce they have taken control of the airport. Then in the next maybe six, four, five hours, the army is taking it back. And it's quite an important place. But the real focus of the whole fighting is in Khartoum. Because uh, don't forget, Sudan uh, army is really still concentrated in Khartoum. The worries about this will spread out across the whole country and it's become more of a civil war. It is it start to, to, to become more of, of uh, unfortunately, a reality now, because you can see some people in, in some part of Sudan are ob observing. We hear news from Darfur, from uh, Niala, from both Sudan, from other cities of the, uh, of the, of the country, Blue Nile districts, uh, and so on. Many observers, but the problem is the rabbit support forces are those who, the history of this uh, particular militia is the one who used to be running uh, out of control in Western Sudan. And the worries if this will expand and will expel out of Khartoum suddenly 
into a civil war, really. And if that happens, uh, where broadly are the power bases of the, of the two generals? We have Al Burhan and Hemeti, the two generals. Where will they draw support? Uh, overall, based on many military reports and expert analysis, the upper hand likely to be with the army because of um, from many many statistics, the army will eventually have the upper hand. I think so. But the issue is uh, that this big fighting in Khartoum now is terrorizing the citizen. And uh, don't forget, over the last one and a half year, when we have the Juba agreement, four of other groups who were fighting, the, these groups are now having their own, if you like, military back end in Khartoum. So Khartoum is not just hosting or, uh, or housing the rabbit uh, forces, but also other groups. We hope these other groups, they will stay as they are. They will not be drawn into any, if you like, conflict between the army and the rabbit forces. If things is bail out, uh, obviously, the rabbit support forces, they have a lot of allies and support from the, uh, the region of Darfur region. And this is what people are really worried. Particularly, Sudan borders are quite wide with Chad, with other places like Libya and others. And this has always been the worry. The area in the west of Sudan is very, very large and it's very difficult to be really even controlled during normal peace time, let alone about the war time. Well, um, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much uh, for your time, Ala, Alam Ahmed. Thank you so much. And uh, of the International Diaspora Project, Sudan Knowledge, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate that.